I got a question on IG about cannabis use by the ancient doctors. So we will go over that. And it flows well from that last video about cannabinoids for wound healing because a couple of the ancient doctors talked about that application. And also today we will end with the recipe from Democritus for hemp wine. I'm Lex Pelger. I do can education for CV Sciences. The makers of these excellent CBD and THC products from Plus CBD that would have met with the approval of the ancient doctors. We will begin with the most famous psychoactive reference in the entire ancient world, and it comes from Homer's The Odyssey. He speaks of the renowned Pharmacon Nepathenes, an Egyptian medicine that banished sorrow. To quote, But Helen, the daughter of Zeus, remembered something, and immediately put a magical agent into the wine which they drank, good against sorrow and bilious nature. For all evils, it created forgetfulness. It was in the mixing jug, Anyone who then drank of it on that day would no tears flow down his cheeks. Even when both his father and mother would die. Yea, even when his son, the beloved, or his brother would be slain with swords by the enemy directly before him, so that he would see it with his own eyes. Now the daughter of Zeus could avail herself of such skillful effects. So what was it that she put in that mixing jug? Nobody knows. The guesses are all over the place. They include henbane, mandrake, belladonna, opium, and hashish. So Homer was the 8th century BCE. The next reference we have comes from the 4th century BCE with Democritus, often called the laughing philosopher. And he spoke of a plant called potamogus, which should probably be construed as hemp. He said that when this plant is taken in wine, together with myrrh, it produces delirium and visions. He was particularly struck by the immoderate laughter that inevitably followed after someone had consumed this drink. Then you have Theophrastus, who is known as the father of scientific botany. And he gave a description of hemp, which he called Dendromalash. And his description is still considered botanically correct. So he was the first person to really describe the plant in a scientific manner. Then the author here, Christian Rash, goes into a side about, in the Dionysian tradition, the use of consciousness-altering psychoactives, and how this was not only accepted, but this was the very basic of the ecstatic worship that often happened. Now, to be clear, there is no evidence that hemp was used in any of these ceremonies. We know something was used in the Aleutian Mysteries, but no one is exactly sure what it is. But, as he states, it's quite possible that the inhalation of hemp smoke was part of this hero botanical, that is, ritual practice. And there is one classical Greek term called cannabizin, which is to inhale hemp smoke. There is another term, uh, methysheskai, which, which means become inebriated through the use of drugs. And so... When Herodotus was using uh, this word to describe the inebriation of the inhabitants of the island in Arax, uh, it was an inebriation produced by smoke. And so it's been frequently suggested that Pythia, who is the oracular priestess of Delphi, that she inhaled hashish smoke in order to enter her prophetic trance. Um, but there's also a lot of guesses how the Oracle of Delphi's were accessing the other world, uh, that there were vapors coming up through the floors where they were, or that they were just simply using breathing techniques like holotropic breathwork to reach these states, or that it was from years of training in whatever it is that they did. There's no evidence that they were using psychoactives, but also psychoactive use was rife around this time, so it is plausible, but certainly not proven. Also, in a piece of research that was new to me and is quite fascinating, there is a death oracle of Ephra on the river Acheron in Asia Minor that was very important in Greek culture. People would go there to regain their health, and people would sleep at the temple. And the temple sleepers were often given a prophetic healing sleep with such agents as opium, mandrake, uh, the alkali rich seeds of lupines, as well as hemp. And some archaeologists were digging there in 1959, and at Ephra, they discovered bags full of black clumps of hashish. And so it is entirely possible that the temple sleepers at Asheron were administered a preparation of hemp so that they would have especially intense dreams related to their healing. Now moving on to Dioscorides, the Greek physician of the first century and his infamous picture of cannabis. Because in so many books, you'll see this referred to as perhaps the first ever drawing of a cannabis plant. But according to Rash, that is probably not what it is. In all likelihood, this is actually the chase tree, which is easily confused with a cannabis plant. But the chase tree, which is also known as monk's pepper, is a potent aphrodisiac. Isn't that funny? Monk's pepper is the aphrodisiac. 
But Dioscorides, in his very influential writings, did talk about the Kendo's plant as a very strong rope and how it has foul-smelling leaves like those of the ash, a long, simple stalk, and a round fruit, which, when consumed in great quantities, destroys procreation, which there's some evidence for that. When green and made into juice and trickled into the ears, it is a good remedy for ear ailments. Those writings influenced the infamous Pliny the Elder, who wrote his 37-volume series on natural history, which was the most comprehensive and significant nature writing of the time. Pliny the Elder had this to say about cannabis. Hemp is exceptionally useful for rope. Hemp is planted when the west winds of spring are blowing. The more closely together it grows, the thinner are its stalks. The mature seeds are stripped off after the beginning of autumn and dried in the sun, the wind, or over a fire. The hemp plant is pulled out when fully grown. The peeling of the stalk and the cleaning are performed by candlelight. The best comes from Arab Hisar, which is a region. This is used especially to manufacture hunting nets. Three types of hemp fiber are produced at that place. Those types which come from just below the cortex are held to be of lesser worth, while that uh, from the inside is highly esteemed. The second best hemp comes from Mylasa. As far as the height, the hemp from Rosea in the land of the Sabines grows as tall as a fruit tree. And when he talks about the medicinal properties, he said, Hemp originally grew in the forest and had blacker and coarser leaves. Its seed is said to destroy the procreative powers of men. Its juice dispels the little worms from the ear and whichever animal has gotten in there, um, which is true. Uh, was more evidence for very good for the anti-parasite uses of cannabis. Uh, although it will give a headache. And so great are its effects that it is said that water in which it is poured becomes thicker. For this reason, it also helps when given in water to treat diarrhea in the beasts of burden. Another well-proven thing. The roots boiled in water softens joints that have become stiff, also from gout and similar fits. And in talking about uh, skin care, the root is placed raw on burn wounds, but should be changed frequently before it dries out. So says one of the great writers of the ancient world. And for our last famous physician to focus on, Galen. And he wrote over 500 medical texts, and he was in the first century, and he was so influential. His texts were still standard textbooks up until the Renaissance. Over a thousand years, he was still the go-to person about medicine. And here's what he had to say about cannabis. He said, the seeds, that usually means a fruit, like the little uh, things we think of now as the, the flowers. The seeds dispel the wind from the lower abdomen and dry the user to such an extent that when it eaten in excess, sexuality is extinguished. Some squeeze the juice from the green seeds and use it as a remedy to treat pains caused by the blockage of ears. He wrote that in Italy it was customary to serve small cakes containing cannabis for dessert. These increased the desire to drink. Excessive use, however, had stupefying effects. Offering hemp to guests was considered a sign of good matter, manners, for it was considered a promoter of high spirits. Some things never change, huh? And finally, two quick references for medical scientific interest. There was someone in the 10th century called Pseudo Apelius, and in this book he talked about how hemp could be used with fat for the swelling or enlargement of breasts. So another anti-inflammation uh, skin kind of thing. And also for treating herpes, a mixture of crushed hemp seeds and nettle seeds. Um, also the hemp to treat ear ailments again, and also for treating worms. And lastly, Rash mentions a 13th century medical manuscript, and it talks about using cannabis for nipple pains, as well as mixing it with fat for dispelling ulcers, exactly like we talked about with wound healing before. Also for frostbite, another problem of the skin. And as a reward for getting through all that, here's the recipe from Democritus himself on making hemp wine. Add a teaspoon of myrrh and a handful of female hemp flowers to a liter of dry Greek white wine or to retsina, which is another type of white wine. Allow to macerate for a week. Strain before drinking. 